Hey bike farmers, thanks for clicking in. We've got ourselves a filthy, regular old bike right here. This is a bike mobile customer and I decided to bring it back to the shop because it's the middle of winter and it needed a little bit more work than they thought. At first glance, it looks like it's pretty roached, but I took a closer look and I realized it's really not in that bad a shape and I think it's worth rescuing. So I measured the chain and it's definitely stretched out. So I recommended a chain and a freewheel and then these grip shift grips are completely gone and the grips are pretty bad i think the best thing to do is just put new shifters on there because they're dirt cheap i have some micro shift replacement shifters that work great and are 15 bucks so i said you know you get new new cables with that a lot of times i end up replacing the housing with new shifters cable housing and new chain and freewheel this this thing's going to shift and ride like a dream it's already got replacement brake pads that are still in really good shape the tires are good the hub bearings feel pretty good. Uh, the bottom bracket feels good. The headset feels good. So all the expensive stuff is pretty much taken care of. It's also got a sticker from one of the local shops that does a very thorough job on service. So I know it's been serviced before. That's always a good clue that it's worth putting a little bit more money into this. So he likes the bike, you know, an equivalent used replacement is going to be three, 400 bucks. I think for a couple hundred bucks, we can get him out of here with a tune up and some new parts and he's going to love it. So new chain, freewheel, shifters, Tune up, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Always a good idea to start by lubing up the seat post stuff. Drop a little tri-flow on the quick release lever. Lubricate that cam mechanism. And then get some fresh grease in that C-tube. Per the use, we'll pop these wheels off. I think we're gonna start this bike off with some Dawn Power Wash and a somewhat dirty rag. We already know that we're getting new cables. So those guys can just be cut off. Oh, the ferrule got stuck. Both ferrules got stuck. Set the housing aside. Customer gave me a little wiggle room in the price. So I think we will just replace all of the housing. Like I said, that'll give the shifting on this bike just such a brand new feel. Okay, these guys need to come off. Oh, sticky. These are called sticky wickets.
these grips are being trashed, so we just cut those off. Ew, gross. These are the little grip shift washer dinghies. They like to go flying usually. There's some significant goo on this handlebar. So I'm gonna use some goof off. It seems to be coming off. There's a lot of it. Woo. Get nice and stoned while I do it too. Woo. That stuff has got some kick. Oh my god. My lips feel heavy. So if you haven't clicked out already, you're probably wondering why are we bothering with this bike? But I love these bikes for commuters. There's nothing wrong with it. The quality of this bike is as good as it was on day one. And I think it's worth rescuing. Okay, here's some very entry level micro shift replacement shifters that I think have a really good feel to them and they work great and they're cheap so it's what I'm using these days I think they're every bit as good as the SRAM ones just a little cheaper I think they have a better feel too the cheap SRAM, the cheap SRAM ones don't have good haptics not a big fan. And then, get some cheapo hairspray. I'm going with some ergonomic grips. Ooh. Need a little more hairspray on that one. So these clamp-on bar ends, I guess they're all kind of clamp-on, aren't they? But they tend to deform these entry-level bars. Uh-oh, and I just stripped that out. All right. 
Yeah, so I just stripped out that bolt. Now I don't know what to do. I always throw these things away. Now I wish I had some. Okay, off camera, after a little fiddling around, I chased the threads, made them a little deeper, and found a bolt. It's a little bit longer. The bolt's too long now. But it's grabbing threads, so that's good. Right, let's see. Go by feel here. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get this one tight. So these clamps, like I said, these clamps kind of make a home and then they're in their spot. You gotta get them back where they were. Let's, or else they want to flop around. All right, we're gonna leave that alone. I think that's good enough. Always something. Okay, now we got those bar ends back on. We'll tighten down our shifters. Put these guys into place. A little bit of tri flow here. I'm gonna Drop some down the brake pivots. And then in back here by the springs. And then we want to re-lube the cable here. Then I'll kind of grab it and work the lever. Actually, that didn't make any sense. You know, just work it. Just work it. the same thing up front here. Throw a little bit here, a little bit there. Then uh, drop some down the housing for the front brake, rear brake cable. And then you know, as we like to say around here, don't forget to lube your noodle. I just drop a little in there. Let gravity do its trick and then work it. Put a couple drops in the brake pivots. See so all that. You lube all the spots in the system and it brings everything back to life, like day one. Good as new.
throw these wheels up in the stand. So this front hub is a little loose. Yeah, I can kind of adjust it by hand. So what we're gonna do, this is kind of hard to do, keep it all on camera. Yep. Well, this lock nut had backed off a little bit and then the whole system kind of locked itself off. It's a very smooth hub. And there's just a little bit of play, a little bit of wiggle room and then the cam action of the quick release is going to squish the whole thing together and set the preload. So I'm leaving it. Well, just as soon as I say that I'm going to just snug up this side too quick. I think hub adjustments kind of fall into the category of, I don't know how to explain it. It takes practice. I think it, it takes feel to get good at it. But that one feels pretty delicious to me, so I'm leaving it. That's fair, isn't it? I don't claim to be a how-to channel. I hope you learned something by watching me work, but this is a, wa it's a watch me work channel. And then I just clean it. And then once you get it cleaned, you can check it for true. And holy cow, that is a straight wheel. I'm not touching anything. I'll make it worse. That's a good one. Nice and easy. See, don't be afraid by these old bikes. This hub also has a little bit of play in it. I'm just gonna do the cheater method here. Just grab both lock nuts and give it a half a turn. Not even a half a turn, that was like an eighth of a turn. It's really all you need to take that. It just had a little more play than I wanted. Feels way better already. Okay, there's a little wobble to this one.
but we'll clean it just the same. All set. Pop that old freewheel off. Run. Give ourselves a new spoke protector. I know you all love that. Look at that fresh dork disc. Hear that? The heck? This reflective, what you call it? That's still there. on the other side too. There we go. Fixed. I forgot to hit the button on the good chain removal footage. Sorry about that. Close your eyes and imagine that I just removed a chain. That's what just happened. Okay. 
So the way I always say size a chain on these bikes is I go little and little. And I hold this side like that. And then I take this side and I just get it so it's not rubbing. And then I make a mental note of what to remove. And then I remove it. take a quick link and I futz with it for a half hour. Twenty nine minutes and fifty nine seconds. There we go. Backwards until I get to that point, and I go bam. And then you got your link set. Shiny and new. The new chains come with like kind of a waxy coating. I just spray it with Tri-Flow and wipe it off. I'm just seeing some rust on things here. So, just hit it with some Tri-Flow. Just to wake things back up a little bit. Rehydrate. could just spray it. Cable tip. Another cable tip. That guy's got a little home to get tucked away in there. Okay, so I just cranked on that shifter without pedaling. Just cranked on that shifter without pedaling and created all that slack in the cable. So we're going to pull the slack out. And all that is, is with a fresh cable and fresh housing, everything stretches, but the housing also seats itself in all the ferrules. Everything moves a little bit. 
Another way to do it is to kind of grab the cable and just pull on it, yeah, which I just did and got a whole bunch more. I probably should have waited to cut it and put the cable tip on. It's a little bit longer than I want, but it's acceptable. It's kind of like pre-stretching the cable. really good. So we'll check the front. Same deal, we gotta pull on it. Give it a bit of a pre-stretch. Again, I should have waited to cut and put the ends on, but it's fine, it's acceptable. Okay. Something else going on here. So I'm in the granny gear right now, which means I'm in the big cog in the rear and the little ring in the front. And the chain is rubbing on the inside of the derailleur there. So I'm gonna look for my low limit, which is this screw here. And with the cable loose, it needs a little bit of help there. I should be able to... Oh, that's as far as it goes. Why do I struggle so much with front derailleurs? <sighs> well, that was the mechanic before me. I think it's the wrong size bottom bracket. Not much we can do about it. It's really not terrible. And we're accessing all the gears, so I'm gonna leave it. It's working. These brakes don't feel great. So I'm gonna add some tension. make them a little more acceptable. First we got old cable and old housing. So you can kind of feel it a little bit. It's not as perfectly snappy as I like, but it's way better than it was and it's functioning just fine. So I'm gonna leave it, you know, it'd be, what? 10 or $15 in cables and housing and another 20 in labor. And uh, I can just kind of lube it up and add some tension and it's acceptable. So let's wait for something to break or really wear out completely. 
I just kind of, you know, take this triflow and drop it wherever I see rust forming on these old kind of commuter e-bikes. Okay. Tension's off on this front brake. Seems like I got it. It's a bit of a rattle there. That's the headset. Yeah, that lock nut was just a little loose. That's better. Just a couple of final touches. Like to drop the tri flow to keep the rust at bay. Give things a cinch. Rusty water bottle screws, purely cosmetic. But I think that is a tuned up bike. Well, thanks for coming along for the ride. It was fun having you. I hope you learned a little something. Maybe you saw something you haven't seen before, but that's a pretty standard service around my world. I generally work from the back to the front, clean everything, lube everything, adjust everything. You know, this wasn't a total reconditioned job. It's a little different than what I do with my used bikes. Those I take a little extra caution or replace some more parts, that sort of thing. A lot of times I feel like with my customers, you know, the expectation is that they're just gonna pay a hundred bucks for a tune-up and I'm totally fine with that. And I don't like the upsell. I don't like having people feel like I'm selling them things they don't need. So, you know, there's plenty more I could do with this bike to improve it or to bring it up to reconditioned status. But I don't think that's what they want. In fact, they weren't even sure they wanted to do the few things I did recommend. So, I think with just by replacing some drivetrain parts and putting these new shifters on, we made some huge improvements to where this bike was before. It's definitely going to feel better with the new grips. I think it's going to ride just fine. The wheels are straight. The hubs feel great. It's a good bike. I don't see any reason why this bike couldn't live another 40 years. So if you watch all the way to the end, thank you so much. That's the number one thing you can do to support this channel is to watch to the end. So I really appreciate that. If you like this content and want to see more, you got to support the channel. Many ways you can do that. A quick like or a subscribe, obviously. You can give me a super thanks, throw me a few bucks, buy me some tacos, I love it. Or consider being a member of the channel, give a monthly donation. I'll see a little star by your name and I can answer your questions in the comments. I'm not really compelled to answer a whole lot of questions for people that are just barking questions at me in the comments. If you become a member and get one of those little stars, you'll probably get an answer. I'm here to help, I'm here to help, but I like to be compensated for my efforts. But most of all, don't forget to click that notification bell so you and your bike can stay tuned.